Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Chelsea. I collect cute things, I make cute things, I sell cute things, I just really like cute things. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I made these. <laughs> I've kept them in my hand all that time then, but I basically made these little ray charms. I love them, they're like little stingrays. Oh, look at that, they have little details on the bottom. They've got all the dots and stuff on the top. I put the little faces on the sides here. I absolutely adore them. So I'm gonna run you through the process of me making these today. These will be in a future shop update, probably the next one coming. I don't know quite when it's gonna be yet, but yeah, I wanted to show you how I made them and the process of me making them. And yeah, I just love them. Look at that cute little faces. I think they are so, so cute and so adorable. Hopefully this will like give you a little bit of inspiration to get crafting, get your clay out yourself. Um, I don't know, but yeah, hopefully you enjoyed today's video and I'm just going to get straight on into it. Hello, it's voiceover me. This has been a long time since I've done a voiceover. Anyway, to start off with the clay charms, so you're obviously going to need some clay. The clay that I use is the Fimo Soft in the number 43. This is just the colour of it. It's this soft kind of like light pink beige colour. I just really like the texture of this one. The textures kind of change depending on the colours, but yeah, that's the clay that I'm using. So to start off with, I took a ball of clay. I pushed it down and squashed it to around about half a centimetre thick. And then I ended up just like really gently just pulling one end end of it to make the tail like shape. To reinforce this I used craft wire as you can see here. You could just buy this at loads of places like Hobbycraft, The Range in the UK. Um, it's really inexpensive, probably about two pounds for this whole reel but it really does reinforce charms with like skinny kind of like fragile bits. <laughs> um, to cut that I just used some wire cutters and then I just rounded off one of the edges and popped it back inside of that tail bit. This did push the clay back in but once we already had that piece I knew like kind of how much I had to pull it back just to cover the entire wire. Next to create the shape of the ray I just kind of took my index finger and my thumb and just pulled out each side of that rounded circle that we still had left like away from the tail then I just pressed it down onto a tile down on my desk. You can press this down onto any non-stick surface. Non-stick's going to work better so like a baking tray maybe some non-stick paper some foil just press it into that and then shape it out onto that because then you're able to peel the shape off. So like I said I just pressed it down rounded it out a bit. I used a pen to kind of reinforce and just like make those little kind of like inner circle parts more rounded and more uniform and then I actually used a Cricut tool to be able to fold up two kind of rounded parts of the triangle part of the stingray's body if that makes sense like I just used a Cricut part to kind of round it over just to help keep that nice and rounded and not like a little bit janky if I was to do it <laughs> with my own hands. I then cleaned the piece with an alcohol wipe, inserted the eye pin into the tail part where that wire was. Then before baking, I just went in and made sure that all the rounded pieces were as round as could be with the pen lid. Again, I just used my Cricut tool to just even out some of the little lumps and bumps around the eye pin for example just really making sure that the shape was just perfect before baking you can of course go in and sand it afterwards but it is a lot of hassle to do that if you can get it right in the first place so once i had my shape completely done like so i just popped it into the oven for 20 minutes at 110 degrees celsius this is the piece then cooked and cooled down so what I like to do is I actually just like to use a little bit of blue tack on um, um, a tile, just again, a tile, um, just so that I can pick it up, move it around, get to every angle and it obviously holds it in place as I paint. This is a great technique if you're making small pieces, small figurines, that sort of stuff, painting small bits, this just holds it in place. So once I had the background colour painted, I went in with a tiny little dot of UV resin, just kind of evenly spread that <laughs> over the whole piece using a paintbrush cured that down with my uv nail lamp then i added some dots on it using a white posca paint pen this is the 3m paint pen um the size of it and it gave this kind of like size dots <laughs> going back in with some more uv resin i just cured that down so just a small coat of that well a thin coat of that i should say and then i used my uv light just to cure that down and that obviously just sealed in all of those dots so once I had that paint done, I flipped it over and then took some more white acrylic and just painted in the base colour um, in a white. I thought that this would be really kind of good to make the bottom white. You could make it any other colour you wanted to, but I thought white would suit the piece a lot better. So just painted in the bottom side of that, include the tail, everything like that, just making sure that those lines were really neat. And I also made sure that the white kind of went up a bit where like the stingrays like what do you call them wings 
wings. <laughs> I don't think they're fins. I'm going to call them wings. Um, just kind of like wrapped around so you could see it even when the stingray was flat on a table. Once I had two layers of the white done, it was nice and opaque. I just glazed that colour in and then I went in and added on some details. Just using a really, really tiny paintbrush just to kind of um, paint on some kind of gills and then once that paint had dried I cured that down as well. On this layer though I did add in a tiny weeny little bit of glitter so there is a little bit of a glitter kind of finish to the pieces. I really like to do that on my pieces but these ones here don't have as much glitter as I usually put in. Anyway so the bottom's cured in, all glazed, all sorted. Well, the top is also but I just needed to put the face on so I turned the whole piece to the side put it down into a piece of blue tack on the tile again and just use another tiny little Posca bait pen to put the face on. Once that face it was completely dry I then took a whole load more UV resin and just glazed the piece one final time. So whilst I was filming this video I also made a pink and a purple version just all in the exact same way. They had the little gills kind of painted on the bottom and the faces at the front there. The little kind of eye pins are also in the same place and the dots are all the same just the fact that the backgrounds are pink and a purple thought that would be a really really nice touch to be able to make three different kind of colored ones at the same time i absolutely adore how they turned out so i still need to put the findings on them if you've been around on my channel for a little while you'll know how i do this but i basically just take the double split ring split it like so using a split ring plier i just pop that onto the eye pin itself so just like this i place it in and then i take another pair of pliers and i twist that around get the lobster clasp I place that on like so and then I just twist and twist until the split ring has closed and then it's just like a little charm so I actually choose to put the um little eye pin and stuff up here on the tail so the tail is obviously reinforced with the wire so I thought that'd be quite a strong point and I obviously couldn't put it on this side here because that's where I wanted the face to be I also didn't want it to dangle sideways so I think he is quite nice especially if you put it on like a little pencil case or something like that then it's going to dangle downwards you're going to see the face a little bit and then obviously you've got the details on the back and then the details on the front I just absolutely love them <laughs> now that I've got the findings on all three of them oh they're all so cute. I absolutely love them. All my tiles are now complete. Love the little white bit on that. Love the way it kind of loops up as well. Um, I just, yeah, I can't get enough. I think they're just a little bit different. And I think that they're going to hang really, really nicely so you can see all the details on there. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then please do give it a thumbs up before you leave. Be sure to subscribe if you're not already. If you end up recreating these, then be sure to tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see a picture, repost you on my stories, that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, thank you so, so much for joining me today. And I'll see you very soon for another video. Bye.